from Cleveland Courts here in Independence, Ohio. Uh, Chris Haynes, Joe Varden for Cleveland.com. Cavs Shootaround has just wrapped up here in preparation for Game 2 tonight of an Eastern, Eastern Conference semifinal between the Cavs and the Bulls. And uh, Chris, let's get right to it. You had the big story last night going into this morning that Tristan Thompson would start. What does that mean for the Cavs? Well, I think they're just trying something different. Uh, obviously, Mike Miller starting that game one. I don't think anybody expected him to go out there and hit 15 and 20 points. But the thing is, he's a liability on defense. As we saw Mike Dunley get off to a quick start. And LeBron James having to exert a lot of energy on the defensive end. Even though Joe Kim Noah, the guy he was guarding, is not a threat to score offensively, but he still has to bang. It's still going to wear and tear by putting Tristan in there. Floor spacing is eliminated, we know that, but it allows everybody else to play the traditional style and traditional form of basketball. And I think they're hoping that that energy, that the extra energy that Brown would give in the offensive end will hopefully get help lead him to a breakout game. Mm -hmm. the, Tristan Thompson's insertion in the lineup is a story for so many reasons, and one of them, which is uh, one of the lesser reasons, is just starting lineups here are a trade secret, <laughs> uh, you know, akin to nuclear codes. And, uh, you know, so obviously, first of all, kudos to you for, for cracking that. But um, it was interesting today uh, how each player reacted to the suggestion that Tristan was starting as though it was a point of in fact, uh, LeBron didn't bite. Yeah. Kyrie uh, not only confirmed it, but talked about how it affected LeBron. And, and Tristan kind of gave us the, uh, you know, played a little coy. Uh, how did David Blatt react? Well, <laughs> well, he didn't speak to members of the media, but I tried to go pull him over to the side and just say hi, good luck, coach. He waved me off. He said, hey, where I come from, Chris, you're either with us or you're against us. So I take that to believe that he, he must have read something. <laughs> indeed, indeed. It's a plus for Cleveland.com. Uh, Kyrie did talk today, and, and this is a good point, just that having Tristan at the four moves LeBron back out onto the perimeter. LeBron has been, uh, you know, fairly straightforward about this, that he will play in the post if he has, mm -hmm. has to, but he prefers to be out there. Just talk a little bit about LeBron moving back to the wing and what that could mean for him. Well, it puts him more in a comfort zone. Now he doesn't have to overthink because I think once you're playing, got LeBron playing a four to five, now he has to, he, he, he mentioned it today, he doesn't like to go into a game, you know, overthink it. Day. So now he's in his natural form, going to the game, how he usually going in the other games and just be himself. And like I said, I, and I think Tristan also into the start lineup is going to help with the, the start. And I asked Tristan about that today. I said, was it? The, was it the slow start that you got up to game one that did you guys in, or was it that third quarter? Mm -hmm. And he just talked about that that start. Mm -hmm. So obviously, David Black wants to make sure there's a lineup in there that's not going to get them dug in a hole. Because as Tristan said, it takes a lot of energy to get back into that game. And I think at the you know at the last part of that winning winning parts of the game. They just ran out of gas. Mm -hmm. Chris, as you know, for probably about the last few days, starting Tristan is something that I had been suggesting. Okay. And, of course, you know, th this has nothing to do with me other mm -hmm. than uh, it's, it is interesting that they have taken this route uh, because it will change how they play. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to get away from the floor spacing. They're going to become more of a traditional team. Mm -hmm. um, and they've talked all year since the trades about how they've been able – they think they can win – multiple ways. Yeah. Do you think they can win as a bigger team, a more traditional team, getting away from some of the floor spacing stuff that they had done so well for so mm -hmm. long? I, I think so, Joe. And when, you know, being that he's starting a traditional lineup, that doesn't mean he's going to finish that way. Because what that does to the rotation balance is that now Timothy Moscow is going to check out earlier mm -hmm. and insert Mike Miller or insert James Jones. Then you right back to that floor spacing and you move Tristan to the five. Mm -hmm. And so you're right back to playing small ball. So that doesn't necessarily mean for the large portions of the game they're going to go big. I think it's more important. I think they realized and felt that it's important for them to get off to a quick start. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is to match the Bulls pound for pound, mm -hmm. position by position. And I think that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, folks, uh, in game one, the final score, 99-92, and now you look ahead, uh, you've got LeBron talking about how he has to play much better. They've changed the lineup. Um, they're going to change probably how they defend the pick and roll. So there are all these things that went wrong, and the Cavs still were close enough to be within one or two possessions within the final minute. Final question for today, what do you see coming out of tonight? I, I think it's going to be hard for a game. I, I really do think it's going to go down to the end. And I expect LeBron to be much sharper. I expect him to really impose his will offensively. 
um, you know, it's going to be up to those other guys if they can step up. And, it's, and it, Cavs are in a tough spot, man. They're, they're, they're trying to put the guys together on the fly, trying to get chemistry going, continuity. And it, it's hard when you don't got your key players. So, But home court advantage, well, not home court advantage, they have, they're at home. They're going to be in it. What do you think? Well, uh, it's a game they have to have. You don't want to go to Chicago 0-2. I read something last night that I think out of the 105 series that have gone 2-0, 100 of the teams that went up 2-0 went on to win the series. Okay. Uh, when you have LeBron James, you can never be counted out, of course. So it's not the end of the world if they lose tonight. But th this is a game they have to have. I think they're going to do it. Uh, you know, uh, this is the lineup I've wanted to see. Now I'm getting it. Uh, so I'm. Uh, uh, it, it is so little about me um, <laughs> that that almost cannot be measured. Um, but once again, uh, great job for uh, to Chris Haynes for uh, for fishing that out. And uh, I know we're all looking forward to see what happens tonight. Uh, please stay on Cleveland.com all day for uh, Chris's reports, my reports, the rest of our team, uh, and we will be back with you post game tonight night where uh, maybe the Cavs have even the series. Uh, at any rate, uh, for Chris Haynes, this is Joe Varden. Thanks for watching.